everybody. Welcome to a virtual art history. Um, if you are out of school this week, you can do this project at home with mom or dad. Um, if you are in school this week, your teacher is going to share this video with you and you're going to do a project together in class. Um, so we are studying Pablo Picasso currently. Um, we did discuss them a little bit last week in some of the classes. I didn't make it to all of them because of the closure. Um, so we're going to go through everything I went through last week too. So you're going to get part one and part two in one video. Um, Pablo Picasso is famous for a type of art known as cubism. Can you say that with me? Cubism? You know, kind of a weird word. Well, cubism is when you take a bunch of shapes and you put them together to make a bigger picture. And we've done some work with that before when we looked at like Matisse, but this is formed to look more like a portrait versus just random shapes. So something like this is done by Pablo Picasso. You can see her face is kind of all mixed up, right? And you can see the shapes in there, the, the squares, the rhombuses, the, the little kind of triangular shapes. So all those shapes are in there. Um, I have another one by Pablo Picasso. Now this lady is very sad. Can you show me your sad face? Oh, she's so sad, she needs a hanky. And you can see again, her eyes are kind of not in the right spot and her nose is protruding very far out. That's not how far out our noses go. Um, they don't go right out of our foreheads, do they? So the art is a little, um, a little unusual. Um, but also beautiful in its own way. Pablo Picasso did a lot of portraits, but he also did um, some works like landscapes. So you can see here there's a big skyscraper. Do you remember that when we would scrape the sky? Skyscrapers, you can see some trees back here and some other buildings are in here and you can even see mountains in the background. Um, this is a picture and it's out of a room. So you can see you're kind of in the room and you're looking out of the windows. And what are out, out through those windows? What are those? Those are trees. They're palm trees even. They have little, it looks like they have little coconuts on them. Um, we are gonna go through our art vocabulary really quickly for this week and then we'll read a little bit and then I'll discuss with you what you're gonna work on in the classroom and at home. Um, so we've been working on these for a couple weeks now, and we have a lot of art vocabulary stacked up here. So we're going to go through this for a minute or so. What is that one? A um, marker. Good. And that? Paint. It's a bucket of paint. And we use this one to paint. A paintbrush. Good. And this one is one of our tricky ones. It's a paint pa palette, paint palette. We have these in our classrooms to paint on. They're called easels. This is another tricky one. Pen and ink, right, ink. This one is, we talked about this before, it's kind of like a mix between crayons and chalk together. We call them pa pastels. And that one, oh, I think I heard someone yell out fabric. It is fabric, but we have a special word for it in art. We call it a text, textile, good. And we use these, our parents may have these at home, we use these to cut up and use the pictures inside. They're called mag, magazines. And we use these to make jewelry. Beads, good. Oh, this one is spray, spray paint. Do you remember what we do with spray paint? We shake it up, and then we spray it. Good. Oh, you may have said statue for this one, and that is so close, but we have another word for it in art. It is called a sculpture. This is where we take all of our art and we store it in one place all together. 
It is a portfolio. And this, Oh, this looks like Play-Doh, doesn't it? But when we use it in art, it's a little bit tougher to use and we really have to use our hands to warm it up and we've got a special name for it. It's clay. What about that one? We use these outside to draw on the sidewalk. Chalk, you're right. And these kids, they're painting. So they are painters, that's true. But what are they when they paint? What are you? An artist, good. Oh, that one's a pencil, you're right. And that one's a crayon. Oh, glue, right, but we have a glue what? Bottle and a glue stick, good. And then this is our trickiest one. And Miss Bridget has taught you some really big words when we talk about this one. So this is a color wheel, a color wheel. And when we talk about colors, the, the first couple colors we talk about are red, yellow, and blue. And those are called primary colors, good. And then when we mix up the primaries, we get new colors and those are called secondary colors. And then when we take the secondary colors and the primary colors and we mix those all up, we get even more colors and those are called tertiary colors. Can you say that with me again? Tertiary. Good. Good. All right. So we have been reading 100 Pablo Picassos um, by Violet LeMay. <clears throat> and we're not going to go through all of it because it is quite a long book, which is what we've learned. But we will go through some of it. So this is Pablo Picasso. He's one of the most important artists of all time. He was born in Malaga, a city in Spain. And the young Pablo Picasso on the opposite page is number one. And there's 99 more in this book. Oh, we see some more here. Two, three, four, five. Pablo Picasso worked on all kinds of art. He was always busy and made more than 50,000 works of art in his life. That's so much artwork. Picasso made this sculpture called Bull's Head using pieces of an old bike. How unusual. And he designed um, costumes for a ballet company in Russia. He was always happy to learn new things. He learned how to make ceramics when he was 64 years old. And Picasso also wrote poems. Sometimes Picasso was sad. And when he was sad, he painted many pictures with the color blue. This time in Picasso's life is called the blue period. This is when he painted really sad looking people like this man right here with his guitar. He looks very sad. And then after the sad period in Picasso's life, he found happiness and he changed the colors in his work. And this was known as the rose period. The rose period is named after Picasso's use of pink tones in his paintings. Rose is the French word for pink. We don't say it that way when we talk in French, though. In 1904, Picasso moved permanently to Paris. He made many friends who helped him become a great artist. And so he's got a lot of friends here, but I want to point out this person in particular. This is Henri Matisse, who we've talked about before. He was another great artist, and Matisse and Picasso became very good friends, but they also became rivals in their work, so they were always competing against each other to make the best paintings. Picasso liked to paint himself. He made several self-portraits. He painted this one here when he was only 15 years old. And this is a picture of Picasso. So you have to count this one too if you were keeping track of all the Picassos we were seeing. A self-portrait is a picture of you created by you. 
Picasso began a new style of art called cubism. This picture is called the three musicians. And you can see there's a lot of shapes in here. We've got squares and some curves here and some triangles here and some circles. So you see a lot of different shapes in that painting. In cubism, artists show all sides of an object in a single picture. And artists use cubism in all kinds of mediums from painting to sculpture. And cubism is what made Picasso so famous. Um, so that is enough of this book for today. Let's go ahead and talk about the art project I'd like you to work on. So today or later this week, I would love for you to make a picture of yourself, a self portrait, just like Picasso did. But I want you to make it using tons of shapes. So if you're at home and you're in the blue lambs, I really want you to cut up stuff and cut up your own funky shapes like we did when we studied Matisse. And then I want you to put those shapes together and draw on them to make a picture of you. If you're in the younger classes, I have a bunch of these fun cutout shapes for you to take and put on a piece of paper so you can glue those down and then I want you to draw on that as well to make a picture of yourself. So that is your art goal for this week. I look forward to seeing you next week. Most of you I will see in person, but I will continue to send these um, videos home so that we can socially distance and be safe while we still do our art class. Bye everybody.